don't get do you think you can ever keep your food in the bowl do you think you ever can don't get we need to have a talk we need to discuss if you would like your haircut this year we've worked very hard on your coat i know you're just a burn away do we shave it off or do we keep it what do you want you want a haircut exciting stuff this time I'm gonna start by punching those motor mounts in weld them into place well good day everybody welcome to today's video today's video we are going to start doing the cleanup on the frame you know not every job can be fun and exciting but sometimes it's got to be done anyways um Let's fucking pack this shit up. Let's get this done because real fun's gonna be doing the motor work inside, doing the wiring, and uh, nobody likes doing body work. I especially don't like doing body work, but it's gotta be done because if I don't do it, someone's gonna say, Why didn't you do it? So now I'm gonna do it. I also picked up this earlier in the week, ordered it offline because I got the headers here. I just got covered with a rag and I was thinking at one point in time to wrap them, but I picked up some ceramic paint. So I'm gonna ceramic paint them myself. It's a silver and it can withstand temperatures of over 2000 degrees. Fahrenheit and thermal shock from those temperatures directly into water with no adverse effects. So that's what I'm gonna put on the Jeep. We might get around to that this weekend, who knows. First things first, let's get this done. I just cranked it up a little bit more of the frame sticker than I thought. Those are all welded into place. Now we'll get the needle scaler out and beat off as much of that rust. And then we can uh, get ready for the POR 15, but I should spray some stuff on those threads. Bust out some of this rust release penetrant. Give it a good Give it a good soak down for tomorrow. Look at that shutter down. Finally, after a year, the best beer ever, Chilkoot, Yukon Brewing. They got one flat in, so I bought it all. One of the cans were damaged, so he gave me this to try out. We'll see, but I'm so glad I got some Chilkoot. Well, if you live where I live, where everything rusts, you know, putting like a six or seven mil wrench up top there and then nine sixteenths underneath and trying to get that off is going to be impossible. I'm going to show you a real savage way that works. So what you're going to do is take some good old vice grips, put it somewhere where it's not going to rub the chrome, make sure they're tight as frig. Back it up against there, put the old impact on her. That bitch was just smoking getting that off. Look at that, eh? Done. And I hit all that rust. Just those shock towers or spring towers are the only thing I need to hit. Maybe I'll try to hit there too, but tool for that is the L needle scaler I picked up a little while ago. Throw some oil in her. Go over to the air compressor. This is one of those tools, definitely 
don't want on your ball sack. <laughs> I wouldn't feel too good on your balls. This is the moment I see if I gotta punch a hole in this. So I found out where the elusive bolts go when you're working on your Jeep. They go right down in there, blew out all the dirt, and lo and behold, we got some treasure in there. Let's get a magnet. One bolt. Look at that, eh? I lost that a long time ago. I remember I did. Is there anything else down there that we can pick up? Nope. Those two things. Sweet. Little sanding pads are awesome. Just kind of gave her a quick go over both sides. I'm not going to do the whole frame in POR 15, just basically from the motor mount to tower right to about there, just little sections. Some people may argue that I should do the whole frame, but not really necessary. Just doing a little section, maybe up around here. Still going to take these off. I'm going to sandblast these, bake them, uh, recoat them. Probably POR 15 this as well. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Unfortunately, this is the sad part of the videos where no one's really going to care about doing this work, but it needs to be done before we can put the engine back in and the real work starts. Just been running the load on the generator. It's been sitting all winter. And after it's been sitting for a while, she likes to smoke for a bit. Want to get some gas going through because had no camping in a couple of weeks to check out the claims. Now, I just spent the last couple of hours cleaning off the firewall there. You can't actually see blue through there, surprisingly enough. I went down to the paint shop today because I was going to get some paint mixed in a can, but it was like starting at 25 bucks and I have some leftover paint from the Jeep. Um, so I think I'm just going to mix up some of that. So while I was there, I picked up some stuff. Of course, you're going to need some filters. Picked up a new dryer. Mixing cups to make it easier. Got some scotch bright for the firewall. A couple rolls of tape. I'm going to try this stuff out. This is the copper weld through primer. I've seen the zinc, but we're going to try the copper. Fast drying with superior corrosion protection. Let's we'll see how that works. Needed some more gloves. Filters for the gun. Got some key stock for the motor mounts there that we're going to weld in to uh, make it easier to tighten that nut up. And the headers called for some ultra black gasket maker Primatex. And when I was in the store, the ultra black, um, at least not the kind they had, had the temperature radians for this. So this is up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And I Googled them. The company and this was the highest temperature they got so we're gonna try it if it leaks we're gonna have to try something else but it is what it is and of course i got the um what the fuck is it now i forgot brain fart ceramic coating in there so now before we get ready for the por 15 i want to take this sway bar off and these clamps so i could sandblast them powder coat them and uh, patch up these corners because they're getting kind of corroded. And I picked up a roll of masking because you guys gave me so much grief over using newspaper that I picked up some actual stuff today. So there's one piece of advice I can give you guys, especially removing anything on the frame, is always try to bust it free by hand. Because I can tell right now, that's pretty tight. And if I put my impact on there, well, actually that one will come off. This one here is being a little stubborn. If I put my impact on there, there's a good chance I might bust the weld that's holding that nut on and cause major issues. However, 
It is coming up too. But one thing we're gonna do afterwards is that we're going to anti-seize everything. Let's get these ones here freed up too. Let's hope we can get those ones busted off. Yeah, those will all come out. Now, however, sometimes it's not always gonna work. See how rusted that is. Free. All right, sway bar is off. Wonder how easy these bushings are gonna be. Oh, they come off slick and they still still got grease in them from way back in the day. Oh, I think this one might be a little drier than a popcorn fart. Yeah, this one here dried out. Probably because of the rust. Yeah, there's a lot of rust in there. We'll clean her up though. POR 15 it and send it on its way. Took a little bit of time, but got her all cleaned up. And one thing you gotta notice, especially when I was sanding it down, any pockets of rust that were just surface rust actually extended way out. So now that this is cleaned up and hand sand it quickly, we can start the metal prep for the POR 15. And if you plan on using POR 15, I highly suggest, I said this before, is to buy the little six packs because once you open it, it's pretty impossible to reseal it. People have used bags on top, but if you try to put the lid back on and it seals tight and over time it dries up. And so I just prefer buy the little cans, way you go. All right, let's get set up for the boring part, prepping it all. All right, start off with the degreaser. Mixed up. Spray down the frame. I got the engine covered. And I also got a blanket underneath the tarp. Just in case it decides to bleed through. Cause I can already see she's dripping down there. Urethane bushings, I can't remember when I installed them. It was probably about four years ago or more. Still in good shape. This is the one that was all rusty. All right, I'm back. We're gonna start doing the metal prep. We gotta keep everything wet for half hour had a situation had to run inside lost some video footage um what happens i had a memory card from a long time ago and it didn't work in my drift camera and i just thought maybe it was the drift camera it was the 64 gig high speed cars a lexar whatever it is and i was uh recording with the gopro for a while there and never had any issues and everything was going good all of a sudden I was cleaning off the degreaser off here and I went to stop the recording and uh, that was it, it was dead. So I had to go inside and see if I could recover the files and I did. The problem is with the memory card is that I bought it off Amazon and I don't think it was a genuine card, I think it was uh, it was a clone, that's probably why it was a lot cheaper than normal. Um, note to self, if you guys see those cards on Amazon, probably stay away from them because they're not gonna work that well for you. Let's spray all this down. And we gotta keep this wet for the next half hour. Half hour's passed, now I gotta 
clean her off with water. Make sure it's bone dry before we can apply the POR15. So what I'm gonna do is spray it down with water, blow it off, spray it down again, blow it off, and then do that part. I got thinking too, right? Instead of, um, I got a, I paint the firewall, but I also need to paint um, the grill of the Jeep, which got a little bit, a little bit battered. So while I'm mixing up some paint, I might as well mix some paint to do the grill as well. Anyways, this is the second time I hosed her down, so I'm gonna air dry it. Well, I'm gonna say we're at the part they consider to be bone dry. So now we're gonna get the POR 15 out, paint these center sections alongside there, sway bar in the front, and we're done for today. Weather's kinda getting kinda ugly out. Now this is the part. I see if I need to shake it first. We'll just shake it up just in case. Now this is the part where I open up the can and then I accidentally drop it on the floor. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. If you're using this POR15, you make sure you got gloves because you get this stuff on you, you'll be wearing it, wearing it for a long time. This stuff does not forgive at all. Trust me, ask me how I know because I've been wearing it a few times. Oh, giving her a nice coat there with the brush. Pick these bad boys up at Princess Auto. These premium brushes here. So maybe I'll be able to paint it on with I'll get in some bristles in the paint like what happened with the 57 Chevy. Yeah, I wish I would have been able to finish that project but sometimes you know the cost to finish a project far exceeds what it's worth. It was only a four door car. The amount of money I was gonna dump on it to get her up to that stage would not have been worth it. You know, it is what it is. I think you guys are a lot happier that I'm back to doing Jeep projects now. Now this sway bar, that's gonna be the tricky part here. All right, first coat, POR15 is on where I needed to treat it. Looks way better. And the reason why I say get the small cans, as you can see right there, I haven't even used half of it yet. Just sitting here getting high, sniffing the paint fumes from the POR15. Looking good, looking good. Gonna let it set up for, or should I say, let it set up for another 10 minutes. We're gonna give it its final coat. And that should be good. I don't remember to cut that corner out. I did mark it, but I forgot now. So I'm gonna have to take a wider cut than I thought and probably re-weld it. Cause you can see where it's spot welded. So if I cut past where it's spot weld is, it's gonna open it up. I need to take care of that. Well, it's the following day. Everything is looking good. Nice and shiny. I wish it would stay this way, but I've had lots of people tell me that POR15, while it's a good sealant, isn't UV protected, so it will kind of turn like a grayish color from the sunlight over time. 
that's yet to be determined. However, this is another reason why you should have a 3D printer because I 3D printed this funnel right here. Gonna use it on my Honda 2000 generator, the Articat, because it's got that nice little angle on it. So this is one thing about Amazon I love. I had this kit shown in my Amazon wish list for a while. It was like 47 bucks. And Steve Robb always tells me about these deals he gets. He gets an email from Amazon and the price is discounted. Well, the other day, well, actually last night, I got an email from Amazon and this was like $25. But if I went through my Amazon account, it was still the regular price. I had to go through the link. And this was an oil pressure tester that I picked up free shipping $25 you know of course they couldn't get the instructions right because they put the instructions in it for a cylinder test what a huge fail but did I need an oil pressure tester nope but eventually once this Jeep LS project's done we get back to business we're working on this Cummins 4BT I like to go over it and try to start it and decide if we're going to need to rebuild it or not and oil pressure gauge is definitely something I need to see what the oil pressure is, to see, you know, if we can get her to run. How much life's in the engine, you know? If the clearances are too big, oil pressure is gonna be low. we be working on the Jeep right now, except I need to have a look at the vacuum line for, for this hub here. What I'm doing right now is just having a look at it because when I turn left, it makes sometimes like a weird noise. And I don't know if this vacuum line has a hole in it or not, but I don't see nothing, nothing in the obvious. That's for sure. But for some reason when I turn left, it makes this little weird noise. Like, wah, 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 wah. I don't know what the fuck it is. Well, I didn't find it. Doesn't mean it's not there. I just experienced it differently. Let's work all these down. Set my dials in the stereo there. Couple weeks, gonna be heading back out to the gold claims. That's been outside in the shed all winter. Start cleaning up the firewall, sanding this down this next week, get that all painted, taken care of, so we can put the motor back in. <sighs> I think it's motherfucking beer time. Let's have a good old chill coot. All right, motherfucking beer time. Got some chill coot from Yukon Brewery, my favorite beer in the whole world. Cans are a little bit beat up. I guess it's a long trip down from the north, but I'm glad they finally got some chill coot in. It's been a long time, almost a year since I've been able to get it. And, uh, I'm telling you, man, if you ever get a chance to get this beer, it's my favorite beer of all time. You know, I classify this as a beer that's crushable. You can drink this anywhere, anytime, any place. Anyways, motherfucking beer time. <sighs> beer worth freezing for. Anyways, that takes care of this video. A bunch of little things going on. Like I said, going out to the gold claims in a couple weeks, getting the Ford ready. Uh, you know, I know the next video is not going to be very exciting. I apologize. We start sanding down all this and start getting everything ready, put the engine back in. And then, you know, a lot of things we got to decide on is placement of the motor mounts. Um, cause we've got those selections where we could put it in all the way forward, all the way back. Might have to go all the way back. I don't know yet. Depends on how much clearances we got for the radiator that I haven't bought yet. So I might just try to mock it up at the factory. Anyways, we'll deal that bridge. Anyways, we'll burn that bridge when we get there. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Motherfucking beer time. And once we get this engine back in, then we can start doing some real work that people want to see. Anyways, talk to you guys in the next video.